have this vivid memory of sitting in the bathtub one time and just crying. I think I punched my dad once. You're not in charge of me right now. Like, you just won't leave me alone. I had an epidural on my back, so I couldn't move very well. She just wanted me to keep pushing and keep going. Everybody had one. Like, if you didn't have one, you were looked down upon. This is a show where teenagers share their experiences growing up in today's world. I'm your host, Dr. RJ, and this is A Teen's Perspective. Today, I want to start off with giving a few shout outs. So raise your hand if you knew that your parents are sending in progress reports every two weeks about you. Raise your hand if you knew that. Okay, a couple of you guys know that. All right, so you guys on your best behavior. <laughs> Michaela said, yep, I'm on my best behavior. All right, so your parents send in these progress reports, and I love to give shout outs to those who receive great progress reports. Now, sometimes we do get the progress reports like, hey man, my kid hasn't changed one bit. And then we always tell the parents, well, what change have you made? See, we go back to the parents on that because we know that in any kind of relationship, the change has to come from you first. So yes, we get those every now and then, but I want to read some of the ones that the parents have sent us that are very positive, and I like to celebrate these people because I get excited when I read these positive reviews. So we're going to start off with Chloe. Now, this one is actually from one of the coaches. So Chloe was in our platinum program, so she had a one-on-one coach. And now by me reading this, I want you to like hear the changes that you can also make. So we all can make these massive changes and literally a snap of a finger. It's literally a snap of a finger. So I'm going to read it to you and see if you can identify with this. I am incredibly proud of Chloe. What a transformation. When we first met, she was so guarded. No eye contact. So how many of you out there are like scared to look people in the eye? Like you put your head down, you talk. All right, this is Chloe at one point. She gave me one word answers. She said she was really insecure. So if you feel insecure, you got to listen. This is good. She was not aware of self-worth. She says she was shocked quiet all the time, all of her life. But listen, this first month in this program, she didn't even participate. All right, no, no participation. Second month, a switch flipped. She was ready. She started committing to the program. She doubled down on her videos. So hopefully you guys are watching those videos. And then she started applying the tools because these tools work. I didn't just like come randomly make these tools up. This has been years and years of testing. It works. So then she started to care about herself. So she started caring about her hair. She started doing her hair. So for all of you guys out there who uh, wakes up and just, you know, you don't care, you don't brush your teeth, come on now, you know, put some effort into your appearance. And then she came to the session, looking me in the eye, she was smiling, and she started making friends, and even her parents noticed the change. Now, the biggest thing is her grades changed. So she started making straight A's, and it was all from this program. So for you new people out there, hey, I know most of you, your parents just kind of threw you in this, and they didn't even ask for your permission. It's okay. Trust me. They have your back. They want you to take it to the next level. So let's give a shout out to Chloe. So even though she's not on the call, come on, let's clap with me. Clap. Come on, let's move. You got to move. Now, real quick, I'm going to teach you guys something that's going to help you in school. Because I see a couple of you are just too cool for school. You got the hoodie on. You're just kind of chilling, sitting back, right? Now, I'm going to tell you in school, you can't do that. And that's okay to do it here, I guess. But in school, you can't do that. So like a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about time management and you guys not having enough time to study, do all that you want to do and have fun. And the tip that I gave you is helping your mind receive all of the information in class. So when your teacher's teaching, you could either be fully engaged in listening and your mind will remember it, or you could just sit back and be like, oh, whatever. And then you got to go and study that stuff all over again at home and you're wasting time, right? So this has been a proven technique. If you take notes in school, it's going to increase your retention of the information by 75%. That's huge, guys. Even if you never read the notes again. So taking notes. And the idea is that your mind will pay attention to the things that you think are important. So remember that. Your mind will pay attention to the things that you think are important. So if you're like constantly on TikTok and you're getting mad or sad because this person you think looks better than you or they're slimmer than you or stronger than you. Well, guess what? Your mind thinks that's important. So it pays attention. 
And then you start looking at yourself and be like, man, I don't have those muscles or I don't have those abs or I don't have the, uh, what you guys call it these days? The uh, dance you guys had at one point. I don't remember. But the point is you like, look at this stuff and you're like, man, that's not me, right? Oh, Mick said it's drip. You guys don't have drip. I don't even know what that means. But the point is, you guys start looking at this stuff. Guess what? You're telling your mind this is important. So now you start feeling bad about yourself. So if you guys go to school and you're like locked in, engaged like McKinsey, like you got the pen ready. And then when your teacher asks you a question, you hurt and raise your hand, right? When I'm asking you things, you're like high-fiving me. It's getting your whole body engaged. And then you start to remember everything. So just some tips. Hopefully it helps. So let's go to the next one. The next one is super cool. This is Brianna. So this is from her mom. All right. So I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to tell you a few things as we go along. So Dr. RJ, Brianna has finished your program, but she wants to continue on the Sunday sessions. She liked those. So she transformed into a person who's acting like who she wanted to be. She's a, such an inspiration and a leader. So before that, I'm going to stop here, okay? Mom said a key word. So Chesney, you're with me, Sky. Mom says something very important. You guys have a life coach, okay? Sophia, all you guys, you guys have a life coach. You're in this program. Guess what? Not everyone is in this program. So all your friends, they don't have a life coach. So who do you think is the leader? Who do you think, right? So you have all these people who do not have a life coach. And the reason why I say life coach is important is because we teach you to take control of the mind. Most people follow what their mind tells them. You guys don't do that. Remember, you guys don't do that because you understand that you are in control of your mind. You're not your mind. You and your mind are separate, to be honest. You're not the same person. So you have your mind and you have you. You control this. Most people don't live that way. Most people are controlled by this, their mind. So if you have a bunch of friends who are like, they get offended very easily, or they are always complaining, or they always feel like, oh, well, everyone is against me. You know, they get the victim syndrome, whatever. Well, you are a leader now, right? Because you know the tricks, you know the ninja mind tricks, so you don't have to fall victim to that. So remember that you are a leader because you have the life coach. So your friends should be kind of following your lead. So if everyone else is complaining, you don't be the person complaining. All right, so let's keep going. Upon entering the program, her confidence was not great. She used to be a straight A student, but then she fell off. But now she's back to being straight A. So that's awesome. Now her goal is to be a veterinarian. So that's kind of cool. And she's also being recruited to be a division one volleyball player. She's spending less time on social media. Oh man, that's tough to do. And she's taking more time for herself. She's much happier and she's accomplishing much more. So the reason why this is important is this can be for everyone. Like literally at the snap of a finger, your life can change. So now I need some feedback from you guys. Where are my gamers? If you're a gamer, raise your hand. If you game, come on, where are my true games? I know Mick is the one, but everybody else, let's see gamers. So let's all say that life is a game, okay? Life is a game. Just think about that. Life is a game. So get your fingers ready because I want to know how do we know when we won the game, all right? So if life is a game, how do you win it? Who knows the answer? How do you win? Bella, what do you think? Put in the chat. How do you win this game? All right. We already know that how to win Fortnite. I believe you just kill a bunch of people. I don't know. I haven't played. But how do you win the life game? How do you? Okay, here we go. Ali says you achieve your goal. That's when you know you won. Mackenzie said you have your own strategy when you become successful by your own definition. That's cool. I like that, Kayla. Noah says it depends. All right. What else you guys have to say? How do you know when you win? Getting through life like the game board. <laughs> Winning is different from each person. Yes, but I want to know how do you know you won? How do you know you won? Not everyone, you personally. Achieve all your goals and feel an accomplished. Like, I thanks Pedro for that one. When you're happy with where you are in life. I like it, Aaron. And I don't have to work anymore. Mick, I like it. Keep going. What else you guys have? You win within yourself. Man, Lawrence is getting deep. When I'm happy with my performance, all right, you unlock your full potential. Ryan, nice. All right, so you guys have to know your own definition because think about it. Think about this. I want you to just think for a minute. In everything you do, there is like a goal, right? Like there's like an end goal. So you're in school. Most of you guys want to be straight A's. Most of you guys want to go to college. Most of you guys just don't want to get yelled at by your parents. You know, whatever your goal is, you know it. You're playing a video game. Whenever you're like talking to someone, like you meet somebody for the first time, you already have plans in your mind. Like, ooh, I want to be their friend. I want to date them, right? When I'm posting a picture, I want a lot of likes. So you know why you're doing it. So my question is, what is your goal in life? Like, what is the goal? We have to know where we're going, right? 
So that's important for you guys to know. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is one aspect of your life that's probably holding you back. Okay. So I'm going to get you guys to help me out here. First of all, before I want to make sure this crowd that we have today is active. So if you are ready to help me out so I can help you, give me a high five, everyone. Let's see how many active people out there. Let's see. I see David, Tori, Ryan, Yagazi. Cool, cool. Okay, we're ready. All right. So on a scale one to 10, I just want you to type it in the chat. One to 10. If you had to rate your past, okay, your past, just think of your past. If you had to rate your past, one to 10, before I can even tell you what it means, somebody was like a two, a one, <laughs> well, let me give you the rating. <laughs> you guys are funny. So a 10 means that your past was amazing. Like you had the most amazing past and it's setting you up for success in the future. You, you're so happy with your past. A one is you had the worst past than anybody you know. It's terrible, it's horrible, and it potentially may be holding you back. So, Jody, what did you put? Let's see. I see some sevens, some fives, some sixes, a 2.5, <laughs> a 2.5, a four, a one, what? A eight, a four, a three, a seven. Oh, man, a one. All right, so help me out. So if you're less than a five, and if you want me to talk to you about your rating, raise your hand. If you're less than a five, less than a five, Desi, did you, okay, let's talk to Desi. Come on, Desi, come on down. Let's see, Desi. Hi. Hey, Desi, I can hear you. Awesome. Thank you for joining me. All right, so you give your past a what? I give my past a three. A three? Why a three? Because I lost my real mom. She died. I lost my grandma. She also died. My childhood was, like, very traumatic. Uh, my stepdad mentally abused, like, mentally abused me. So, like, I was not having the best childhood, I guess, I would say. No, thanks for sure. I grew up pretty fast. My mom babysat, like, two kids. And she was depressed and laid in bed all day. So I was technically babysitting them. Oh, so you definitely had to grow up fast. Yeah. So that means you're going to be an amazing mom one day, (laughs) right? Because you already have experience. So Um, that was your past. So tell me about your present currently. How are you doing? Well, I live in a better house now. I live with my aunt and my uncle. So they're the ones that signed me up for this. I guess it's better. I still have confidence issues and like insecurities and stuff like that but I mean I guess everything's pretty good it's mainly just myself you know issues that I have to work on well thanks for sharing that Desi so first of all I want everyone to understand this so she just shared a traumatic past right some of us past was not even close to that her past and we probably gave it a lower rating right so that goes to show you it's all about perspective right you probably was like oh you know I didn't have as many friends as I want, so I'm going to give my past a two. But Desi just shared her past, right? But guess what Desi also shared? Her present. So she has her past and her present, and she said a key word. She said, it is better. So that is a wonderful position to be in, right? So she says better. Now, there's some things she wants to grow on, and we're going to help her, of course, But I'm glad she shared that because I want to teach you guys something about your past. So thanks, Desi, for joining us. So, hey, everybody, give a high five to Desi. That was awesome that she shared that. You know how hard it is to just, like, open up like that? And she did that. So I know she's confident. So here we go, guys. Your past, all you guys who rated a one, a three, we want to change that because there's something kind of cool about a past. You guys want to hear about what's so cool about your past? Your past only exists in your head. That's so cool because there's some freedom there, right? So your past only exists in your head. That's super important to know that because that means your present, like today, your status quo could be so much better despite what happened in the past. I'm going to give you some tricks on how to make that happen. Now, the thing I want you to gather from the past that it only happens in your head is because it can hold you back. So there are parents or adults today who still struggle with things from like when they were four years old. Can you believe that? Like they're like 50, 60 years old now, but then they're like still like sad or depressed about something that happened when they were three. How is that possible? All those years passed. How is it possible? Well, I'm going to tell you because it exists in your mind and your mind doesn't know 
what is real or fake. All right. So remember that your mind doesn't know what's real or fake. It only knows what you tell it. Now, how many of you raise your hand, think that your memories of the past is accurate? If you think your memories of the past is accurate, I'm talking about 90 percent or above accurate. Raise your hand. I mean, like everything in your past, you could just like, oh, yeah, this is absolutely happened. Just like that. Raise your hand. All right. So everyone who has their hands up, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> We have already proven this. In fact, majority of your past memories are not even accurate. <laughs> Can you believe that? They're not accurate at all. Oh man, it's been studied. There's a cool study was on uh, the 9-11. So when 9-11 happened, like 10 years later, they started to interview people who lived near there. And all of them was like, memory of it was completely wrong. All of it. Like every last person they interviewed was completely wrong. One person was like, hey, I was at work and from my office building, I can see the towers and I like saw the smoke. And then come to find out when they did the research, they were like at home sleeping during the time, right? So the reason this happened is not because we want to lie. It's not because of that. Our mind has a way of recalling information, but there's so many holes in it. So remember this, as you experience something, you're not experiencing the real thing. You're experiencing through your perspective. So perfect example, what is the difference between a person? So you have two people, and it's funny that I bring this up because oftentimes I coach sometimes couples, but mainly, you know, the teenagers and the parents. One person says, hey, this person is rude. And the other person say, hey, that person is sensitive. <laughs> you see how that happens? This person say, hey, you're rude. Hey, you're sensitive. Who's right? You know? It's literally your perspective. You see life through your perspective. So as you had all these experiences in the past, they're all through your lens. Now, the memory is also distorted based on how you were feeling at the time. So let's say, for instance, you're at school and you see two people laughing and they're looking at you. Say at that time, you're already mad because you just got in an argument with your best friend. You want to remember that experience differently than if you just found out you made an A on a test that you didn't really study for and you're like super happy, right? So your minds remember things differently. Now, it also is different from when you recall the memory based on how you feel. So right now, if I say, hey, tell me what happened to you, your worst memory from last year. Based on how you feel, that whole memory would be completely different. So why am I telling you all this about your memories? The reason I'm telling you about this is your memories can hold you back, but now you have power where you don't have to allow your memories to hold you back. Because first of all, you can't even trust your memories. Now, does that mean like if someone stole your bicycle, that that memory was completely made up? No. Some of the facts are the facts. Like, yes, my bike was stolen, right? But the whole way you remember it is maybe not the same. Now, this is what I want you guys to do so that you don't allow your memories to hold you back, your past to hold you back. Our past serves three purposes. You might want to write this down. So Chesney, Cecilia, you might want to write it down. It's three reasons for your past. If you can remember these three reasons, then you will no longer allow your past to haunt you, essentially. You know, if you were bullied back in middle school, but you're in high school now, maybe you're thinking like, oh, I'm guarded. I can't make friends because I was bullied before. Well, that's the past. The past serves three purposes. Who knows them? First, put in the chat if you know any of the purposes of your past. Let's see. Oh, Braden says one. Yes, Braden, you're right. I'm not going to tell it just yet, but you're right. Desi was right too. Yes. And Stefana's right. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, write them down. First reason for your past, the whole purpose of the reason why us as humans, we have a memory of the past, even though the past doesn't exist, essentially, right? Like we're here today. This is real life right here. But the past is in your head for three reasons. Number one, to learn something. So learning something, you learn from it, all right? That's the reason for your past. So you could think of a situation where maybe you did something that you regretted, okay? You could either focus on the regret or you can focus on the lesson that you learned from it. Oh, I will not do that again, all right? So that's one reason for the past. The second reason for your past is for happy memories. So Desi probably remembers this. You know, Desi probably, when she thinks of her mom, she probably has very positive memories and makes her happy. Now, the cool thing about our minds is that although, you know, her mom passed away, 
she still stores these memories of her so she can recall on her parents at any time. That's the cool thing about our mind. And we've already talked about this, that life generally happens in the mind. So that's very important to know. We have positive memories of the past. So that's also a reason for our memories. Now, the third was the hardest one. Who knows the third reason? Put in the chat. What do you think? Raise your hand if you know the third reason for our, me- our past memories. Third reason. Remember, the first, learn a lesson. Second one is for us to have happy memories we can kind of recall on. makes us feel good. All right. So the third reason I'm going to tell you is a measuring stick. So a third reason is for you to measure your growth. So you can look back and be like, man, I am so proud of myself. A year ago, I was like not motivated to do anything. I didn't do chores. I didn't study. And then today I'm studying and I do my chores and all this stuff. So that's a measuring stick. It makes you feel good. It develops your confidence. So these are the three reasons for your past. And this is what I want you to tap into. Now, what you don't want to do about your past is think about painful memories. (laughs) We don't want to think about painful memories. No pain unless you're trying to learn something from it. Does that make sense? We don't just sit and just think about painful memories. Hey, my best friend stabbed me in the back. She spurred a rumor about me and everybody was like judging me, right? Like you don't want to just sit and think about that. That's going to make you feel terrible. And there's no value in that. Another thing you don't want to think about of your past is your failures, unless it's a measuring stick, okay? Remember that. You don't want to sit back and just think like, oh man, there's no way I'm going to do well in math this year because I've never done well in math. You don't want to think that way. So how many of you want to participate in the exercise real quick? Raise your hand. Thank you, Jody. You're the first one to raise your hand. Thanks, Charles. All right. So I need everyone to participate in this exercise with me. I'm going to teach you something about your focus. All right. So close your eyes. Everyone, I need you to close your eyes. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. You too, Savannah. Eyes closed. Let's see if I see any eyes closed. How many fingers am I holding up? Your eyes should be closed. Mark, I see you opening your eyes. All right, here we go. I want you, with your eyes closed, take a deep breath. All right, here we go. Now I want you to focus on your toe, the big toe. Okay, your big toe. Now, as you're thinking about your big toe, I want you to tell me how does it feel? Is it like, do you feel like a breeze coming through? Is it like sweaty because it's been in socks all day? Tell me how do you feel about your big toe? It could be the right or left. And I don't know how you're typing, Dawson. You should have your eyes closed unless you know how to type perfectly with your eyes closed. All right, next, I want you to think about your elbow. Elbow, go to your elbow. Either one, the right or the left. Go to your elbow. Think about it, all right? Now, how does your elbow feel? Is it warm? Is it cool? Is it achy? Think about your elbow. Finally, I want you to think about your stomach. I want you to pay attention to how it moves when you breathe. Paying attention to it? All right, now open your eyes. Open your eyes. So, If you can master this, you're going to master life. You're like, wait a minute, RJ, what are you talking about, man? I just looked at my toes and then I thought about my elbow, my stomach. Like, how is that anything? All right. Now I'm asking you a question. When you were doing this exercise, were you thinking about the homework that you have to do? Were you thinking about yesterday when your mom yelled at you? Were you thinking about how you do not have enough friends? No. You know why? Because you were focused on what I was telling you, essentially. You are focused. That's called focus. Now, guess what? That's what life is all about, is focus. Now, if you can master this, in fact, I would encourage you to practice a quick exercise like this every day. Just pick something to focus on. Because once you start to do this, you have control of what your mind focuses on. Because you know how it happens. If you start to focus on like this zit, okay, I have a zit on my forehead, and you think about the zit, does it get bigger or smaller throughout the day? It gets bigger, right? In fact, you start to like tell people about it who were not even paying attention to your zit. You'd be like, hey, how you doing, Mick? You know, I'm fine, but man, I got this big zit right here. I'm like, oh, I didn't even notice, but thanks for drawing my attention to it, right? (laughs) So that's what I'm telling you guys. Life is about focus. Now, one more exercise that this is a more advanced exercise I want you to do because I want you to practice these things, all right? That's your job is to practice. I want you to practice these things. Now, who here, give me a high five if you're willing to practice this exercise. This is super advanced. Okay, I see the high five. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So listen, this is super advanced. If you can master this, you literally can change everything about your past. 
I'm this is something cool here. I'm gonna teach you. Remember, as a life coach, I have so many ninja mental tricks. Now, why do I have all these mind tricks? Why do I need mind tricks? Well, the reason we need mind tricks is because I know, as we said earlier, if your mind is in control, man, you're going to have a tough life. I'm talking about it's going to be a lot of ups and downs, man. Somebody look at you the wrong way, you're going to be offended. And then your parents say something to you and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm not the favorite. I'm the middle child, right? It's going to be straight up and down. You don't want that. You don't want your mind to control your life. You want to control it, okay? This mental trick I'm going to teach you will allow you to change the way you remember your past. So I've done this several times with teenagers. I'm going to just tell you quickly about one that was probably the most recent. It was a girl who was bullied in middle school. And she was not confident because she keeps seeing herself being bullied by these three girls. These three girls had her in a circle and they were making fun of her. They pushed her. They spit on her, all this stuff, right? So what we did was we used this mind trick to change the way she saw the past. It's super cool. But in order for you guys to learn this technique, you have to practice it, all right? So I'm gonna get you to practice. I'm gonna teach you something really quickly to practice this. And then once you learn that you literally can change any painful memory of the past. You know, I know Desi said earlier, her step-parents, I think she said they were very mentally abusive, right? Well, we can change that, to be honest. Now, why would we wanna change something of the past? What do you think? Why would you want to change something of a past memory? Well, the reason is because it can hold you back. So remember, like say, for instance, I was coaching a teenager and she told me her mom told her that she regretted having her as a child. And that's some hard words, right? That's like harsh words. That's what she remembered. Now, was that the truth? I don't know. I wasn't there. If I had to guess, it probably did not go that way based on what I share with you. We don't have good memories, right? Our memories are all messed up. But regardless if that was the case, that's what she believed. So we have to address what she believed. So I showed her this ninja trick to change the words that was replaying in her head. Once she changed those words, now it doesn't hold her back anymore, right? So that is the purpose of changing a past memory is because we don't want it to hold you back. I want you to go live in your life with a 10 or you're happy, you feel confident, you feel like you are in control of your mind, which means you have influence over your life and others. So I want you to have this confidence about yourself, but you need to learn a trick first. So close your eyes again. I'm going to teach you something. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. All righty. Here we go. I want you guys to remember the last time you laughed hysterically. So Brandon, I'm talking to you too, my friend. Close your eyes. Try to remember the last time you were like laughing so hard that you just, I mean, you couldn't even contain yourself. It was so funny. Try to remember that. Now, even with your eyes closed, once you have that memory, I want you to give me a thumbs up just so I know you recall the memory. Thumbs up if you got it. If you got it. Something so funny, you were just like, oh my gosh, I was laughing. All right, you see it? So I need you to see it for this to work. So I think everybody got their memory. See, you know, I can tell the people who are laughing right now at that memory, I know for sure you're seeing that memory because it's making you laugh, right? So for all of those people who are laughing, they see the memory and they feel the memory. That's where they're laughing. Now, they are also looking at this memory in their head from their perspective. So in other words, they don't see themselves in this picture. So they don't see themselves in this picture. So I want you guys to go there. So remember a funny memory and you see who all was around you. Maybe it was a couple of your friends. Maybe you're on TikTok and you saw something funny. You know, I saw this funny thing on TikTok. I know they give you videos based on what you view, but I get interested in those animal videos, man, when I see like a lion taking a gazelle and all that other stuff. So in any case, point is, maybe you see something funny there. Maybe your parents told you a joke. Maybe you're watching a movie, okay? See it. I want you to see it with your eyes closed. See it. Now, this is the ninja trick I need you to do. See if you can do this. This is advanced, super, super advanced. I want you now to stand in front of yourself and see yourself. Ooh, that's hard. But if you could do this, this is super powerful, okay? So you're in the memory, but I want you to leave your body in the memory and stand in front of yourself and see yourself. That's huge. Do that. All right, now I'm sure everyone's not able to do it yet, but you'll do it if you practice. Now, I want you to walk around yourself. Maybe you're in a chair looking at TikTok laughing. You were seeing yourself laughing. Now walk around and see the back of yourself. Like maybe you see the back of your head. Maybe your hair was long. You had a ponytail. You had a hat on. 
All right, you're there? Thumbs up if you can see your, the back of your head. All right, open your eyes. Everybody open. All right, cool. So some of you were able to do it, which is cool. If you could do that, that's pretty advanced. Some of you were not able to do it. My recommendation is to practice this, okay? Any memory you choose. It could be funny. It could be sad. It could be like, I just want to remember what I did yesterday at lunch, okay? And try to remember it. Now, what is this exercise going to do? There's something that we call association and disassociation. Now, the words are irrelevant. Association is when you think of a memory and you're in the memory, like you see it from your lens. In other words, you're not in it, all right? It's like first person. You see everything, like right now, I just see you guys. I don't see myself, I only see you guys. That's the memory. So for the people who are great at that, they can feel like it's real. They are very emotional people, generally. So for all of you who are laughing, give me a thumbs up if you feel like you're very emotional. Thumbs up. All right. See, you see that. So the people who associate with their memories are very emotional. It's a cool power. It's very cool because that means they can experience any emotion like that. Like in other words, they can think back to a fun memory and start laughing. That's so cool to be able to do that. Not everyone can do that. And the way they're doing that is because they're seeing the memory from a, an associated standpoint. They're looking at it from their lens. So they actually close their eyes and see themselves in the memory. Now, for those of you who this doesn't come natural, you have to practice this. You have to practice. It didn't come natural for me. I actually have to practice. I tried and tried and eventually I could do it now, but before I couldn't, you have to literally practice this every day. Just try to practice reliving a memory by you seeing it. The rest of you who didn't laugh at the memory Maybe you're better at being disassociated, which is a strong power too. They're both strong power. Now I'm a master at disassociation. It's more natural, but usually you see the people who are not emotional, they're usually disassociated. So in other words, you guys tell me if this is for you. So first of all, all the people who did not, like you saw the memory, but you, it was not funny again, raise your hand. I want to see all the disassociated people. All right, perfect. Now, Moshe, I'm going to ask you this. When you first saw the memory, did you see yourself in the memory, or did you see it through your lens? What do you think? Thumbs up if you saw it through the lens, or thumbs down if you actually saw yourself in that memory when I told you to recall your funny memory? Yes, yeah, see, how did I know that? Madeline, how did I know that? Do I read minds? I don't read minds, but I know minds. So that's what I'm trying to share with you guys. They're looking at it from a disassociated standpoint. In other words, when they're recalling a memory, they see themselves in the memory. If you see yourself in a memory, then your mind will know it's not real and you don't feel it. That's so cool, man. Come on now. If you think this is cool, give me a thumbs up. I just want to see who else thinks this is cool. Now, why is this so cool as it relates to your past? You could change it. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You can literally change it. If there's a painful memory, go disassociate it. See yourself in that memory in it. You're not looking through your lens because then your mind thinks it's real. If your mind thinks it's real, you're going to refill those emotions and then it's going to hold you back. So I'm going to ask you to go out of your body as you're listening to that memory and see yourself in the memory. If you do that several times, your mind will be like, oh, that memory is not real. So I'm going to ignore it. And it won't bother you. And that's exactly what we did with the girl, with the mom who told her she regret having her. We literally disassociated from a memory. Now we did something else that was kind of cool. We changed the mom's voice and all this kind of stuff. And then the mind start kicking it out. It's like, oh, that's not real. That didn't happen. The mind is like, hey, that didn't even happen. So it can't hold her back. And now she can actually try to have a relationship with her mom. She's not holding grudges anymore because that memory didn't even happen. See how cool that is? So this is what I want you guys to practice on. If you want to feel something of your past, I do this all the time with my sons. You know, sometimes I want to reminisce on my son's birth or something my son did. You know, that's one thing I like about Facebook. It gives you these memories. I literally close my eyes. I go back to the memory and I go from associated standpoint because I'm naturally disassociated. So when I have a memory, I'm naturally seeing myself in the memory. So I don't have any feeling about it. So some people tell me, hey, hey you're not that emotional. No, I'm just looking at it from a disassociated standpoint. But then I can know how to move to associate it so that I can feel it. Same thing for you guys. If you want to feel, go association. If you don't want to feel it, if it was a bad traumatic injury or past, see yourself out of the body. Is that making sense? If this makes sense to you, give me high fives. High fives, everyone, if it makes sense. All right, perfect. Practice these things. Trust me, it will help you. I want all of your past memories from now on. Your past is a 10, 
okay? A 10, your pass is a 10 because it's going to help you take it to the next level. I hope you enjoy listening to the group coaching session. And I also hope that you are able to learn something that would help strengthen the relationship between you and your teenager. Until next time, this is a teen's perspective, helping parents see the future.